Hey, hello guys. Welcome to the show. Let's go ahead and talk about this SmackDown for September 6, 2024. This is the last SmackDown for the Fox WWE television deal. Um, Fox went out with a bang. They did blackout screens a couple of times. And that's it. WWE will no longer be on free public broadcast networks. So I don't know what that means for the folks that don't want to pay for cable or don't want to pay for a streaming service that provides USA. I don't know. Because I'm also like, shit. I already got to pay for Netflix. And if I want to see USA just to see SmackDown, I got to pay for Sling. That's the only way to get it. Unless I use my pirated stream. I could do that. But we'll see. Anyway, the Pamiya of Friday Night Smackdown on the USA Network is September 13th. It's supposed to be a whole big shebang for Luca Luca. So we'll see how that goes. Let's go ahead and get into this. Not really a review. Uh, the show was terrible. Anyway, uh, we start off with Cody Rhodes. Whoa! 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 We got our three woes in. He went ahead to Go on about bashing Berlin. Uh, talked about Canada's Kevin Owens. Welcome Michael Cole to SmackDown. Everybody's Michael Cole, Michael Cole, Michael Cole. Michael Cole's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cody said that he wanted to talk to the Bloodline. Bloodline came out. Um, basically, Solo was like, I'm going to go ahead and challenge you because I would have won had... Roman Reigns not interrupted, and in the crowd, we, we, including me, said, we want Roman. We want Roman. And Solo's looking like, yeah, whatever. And so Cody was like, how about for the season premiere, we should have a WWE Championship match and see what's going down. Then we got the We Want Roman chance again. Cody then said that Solo was the guy. But, he didn't want to fight him. He wanted to talk to Jacob Fatu. Jacob Fatu was like, word. So, he came from the back with the slugs showing, wet. And he was easing into the ring. Because Cody was like, come to the ring. Let me look at you. Let me take a look at you. So, he was easing to the ring. And Solo was looking at him like, yeah, I know what you're doing. And you're not about to do that. Jacob decided to let Solo know that he don't have nothing to worry about. And he said, I love you, Tribal Chief. I love you. You my Tribal Chief. I love you. I'll do anything you want me to do, Tribal Chief. I was just like, oh, my God. I understand. Just have him howl. He should just say, oh, oh, oh. Just do that. Anyway, Nick Aldis, the only competent GM right now on any brand because I don't know what Ava's doing but Adam Pierce is absolutely atrocious he was like you know what I know y'all want to fight because they was trying they was going ahead and jump Cody but DYI and the and the, uh, the Street Fire Prophets came out and ran up to Cody to help and then what's funny is I don't know if you know this but uh, Tommaso had picked the belt up, and Cody was looking like, oh, so he took the belt from Tommaso. Whatever, that was just something I noticed. Anyway, so they was in the ring growling at each other, and Nick Aldis was like, all right, look, I know y'all want to eat each other up, but we got a big eight-man tag team at the end of the show, which is the main event. So in the meantime, what I could do for y'all, Cody and um, Solo, what i do is y'all going to defend y'all championship. Y'all going to defend y'all championship, but I'm going to put it in a steel cage. And y'all can eat each other's ass all day long. And then that was it. Okay, then we move into Tiffany Stratton. She and her dressing room were pretty deadly. And um, Nia Jax came in. And Tiffany was like, hey, girl. Hey, my queen. And Nia was like, yeah, girl, whatever. And Tiffany was like, listen, don't believe those rumors that Chelsea's spreading. Because I would never cash in on you. Like, girl, that's the whole point of the briefcase. But I get it. And apparently, um, Pretty Deadly, a.k.a. the male Iconics, are going to have some type of TV show. So let's go ahead, or a uh, Broadway play, some fucking production that's going to take place that, who cares? So Naya 
essentially was like, well, I'm going to help you like you helped me last week. Boom. You already know it's about to be some shenanigans. Match one, we're going to go into Bailey versus Tiffany Stratton. Whoop, whoop, whoop. They mixing it up. Nia comes out, and she helps Tiffany like Tiffany helped her. Tiffany went on ahead and lost the match. Then we went into Kevin Owens, him, Austin Theory, and Grayson Waller. It's like a vortex of bullshit. I don't care. Legato Del Fantasmo. Those are excellent vignettes. What are we doing? What are we doing with Legato Del Tasmo? Don't know. They had some tequila. They drinking. Humberto's voice is super deep. I thought it was like AI or something because he was like, we won. I said, what? Why he looks so, like, soft with that deep-ass voice? Anyway, Santos Escobar was like, listen, we got to go ahead and take SmackDown over. I'm sitting there like, no, y'all not. Moving right along. Apollo Crews versus Giovanni Vinci. Giovanni Vinci has been being teased for weeks and weeks and weeks. He looks like, I don't know, uh, a super uber-rich Italian from Europe, not like an American Italian. I'm talking like from Europe, right? And he's like super clean cut. He looks like he's got makeup on. You know what I mean? He's wearing all the finest silks and leathers. He's, you know, all just opulence on opulence, okay? So he comes to the ring. Everybody's like, oh, okay. He comes to the ring. He's taking his time. He's letting everybody soak in. Apollo Cruz is there. Apollo's super hyped for whatever reason. And Giovanni's taking his jacket off nice and easy because he came out in a Gucci suit, you know. And he's want to ease it off. It was all white, so he wanted to take his time and do what he had to do. And then the ref was, like, riled up for some reason. He threw the signal to go ahead and hit the bell. They was like, ding, ding, ding. Apollo Crews rolled him up, and literally, this literally was two seconds. I'm like, okay. Then we went to the backstage where Nick Aldis was talking to Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. Chelsea was doing her thing. And Meechin comes, walks into the scene with an ice pack on her stomach. And Chelsea Green was talking shit to her. So Meechin was like, you know what? How about we fight? And Nick Alves was like, sounds good to me. Y'all can fight at some point tonight. Then the next match, we had Kevin Owens versus Theory and Grayson Waller. Because remember, he was like, we all three can fight or whatever. They get in the ring, and they do the same thing. Listen, um, whatever. They they beat, I believe. I'm not even sure who won. I'm not about to sit here and act like I do. I'm, I'm guessing um, Kevin Owens won. Uh, is anybody interested in this tease of Grayson Wall and Austin Theory breaking up? Because I don't even know if anybody's interested in these two men. I don't know why this is like a, a T. Break them the fuck up or whatever. Who gives a fuck? Anyway, we moving on to a video package of Andrade, C and Almas, and Carmelo Hayes. And the rivalry, the work rate is getting the guys over. You know what I mean? We loving it. Right now it's 2-2. L.A. Knight came in. He talked or whatever. Um, I kind of was in and out in the sleep. I know he was talking. And then Andrade was out there, and I woke up when he was giving a BFT to Carmelo. And I was like, oh, okay, so I'm assuming whoever wins the the tiebreaker is going to be the number one contender for the U.S. title. Okay, great. Uh, then we had Grayson Water and Austin Theory was talking, and they told me they wanted to face Kevin Owens and a partner next week. So we're going to keep going on with this bullshit. We're going to keep going on with it. Who's the partner next week? I don't know. Randy Orton? Like, who gives a fuck? Oh. Anyway, Chelsea Green, Piper Niven, they went and did their thing with Meechin. Meechin comes in to crickets, baby. Like, I don't understand. We gonna have to have a conversation about Meechin. Because this girl is not hitting. Anyway, Chelsea Green rolled her ass up. And that was the end of that. Um, I like Chelsea Green, so I don't care. The Street Fire Profits and DYI. Did a little pre pre match promo or whatever, and then we went ahead and had the Bloodline versus the Street Profits and DYI, and you know it was a match. Street Profits and DYI is gonna give you what you want, except um what's his name, um uh, Tangaloa, 
accepts him, you're going to get what you need to get out of Sola Sokoa and Tama Tonga and Jacob Fly too. Now, Tangaloa, you, you got to make sure you put him somewhere where he don't be fucking up stuff. They end up winning or whatever, and it was just like, whatever. But what? why did have Montez have to take two spikes to the throat? I ain't like that. And that was the end of the show. I, I mean, that, I don't know what to tell y'all. That was the whole show. And actually, this, um, not really a review went probably longer than it should have been because there wasn't nothing going on in this show. Raw, they're going to have to do something about SmackDown. I don't even know. This this whole Kevin Owens, um, Randy Orton, this little square, Soul Sokoa that Cody Rhodes is stuck in is absolutely ridiculous. They could come up with some better shit. I'm really like coming to a uh, realization that Triple H, who is the head of creative, ain't all that creative. Y'all tell me what y'all think in the comments we made this far, and I'll see you on the next one. Later!